Welcome to In The Workshop. This is the final part of a Stuart 504 boiler. It's part 11, final assembly, finishing the job with a slight modification. To be honest, I should have left the baseboard for another couple of days to allow the paint to harden. It's still a little bit soft. And in this clip, I'm fitting the burner heatsink unit to it. Just the same as you've seen previously when I did the dry run, I'm using four stainless steel screws to screw the part down to the baseboard. If you've seen the previous episode, you will realise that I threaded these holes 4BA and then recessed them underneath. And in this clip, I'm screwing some brass countersunk bolts firmly into position from underneath and into the threaded part of the baseboard. When I turn the baseboard over, it's now time to fit the boiler in place. It just slips over the bolts. And the last part of this sequence is fitting some nuts to the bolts. I use brass nuts and bolts because... First of all, they don't go rusty, and they're also weaker than the cast iron lugs of the boiler. So should the boiler fall over, which is unlikely I know, but at least the brass bolts will break, and not the cast iron lugs on the boiler mounting. In the past I've repaired a few of these when they've been broken off, but not on this boiler, all four of them are fully intact. Now it's time to assemble the check valve adapter that I made. Here it is after it came out of the acid and I cleaned it up on the polishing spindle and it's looking very nice and shiny. On the bench I have the first check valve, the 5 sixteenths one, but before reaching for the Loctite 542 I need to do some dummy runs at connecting this check valve to the adapter to make sure it's in the correct position. Without any kind of washer on there it's definitely not in the right position, so it's time to fit the first of the shim washers. It took three attempts before I found the correct combination of shim washers to make sure that the check valve was in the right position when it was tightened up into the adapter. And here is a gratuitous shot of my Barco spanner. Even though I do pronounce the name wrong, it's pronounced Baco. And here it is in action, tightening the check valve into the adapter without rounding the hexagon part. The next part of the sequence is to actually fit the adapter to the boiler. So first of all, as with the check valve, I try it dry without a washer. And it's nearly perfect, but not quite. I may get away with a really thin shim washer. And don't forget, at the dummy run stage, I'm not applying the Loctite 542. You have to be very patient when you do this job. This is not in the right position, so maybe I should either try a thinner shim washer or a combination of more shim washers to get it in the right position. In the end, I found a shim washer that was perfect, and here's the position it needs to be in before the final tightening after I've applied the Loctite 542. When fitting components like the water gauge and the check valves into backhead bushes, the last thing you want to do is force the issue. The components need to be almost in the correct place, just requiring a bit of a touch with a spanner to tighten them, very much like this. I'm using a larger adjustable spanner, once again the same make that I always use, to finally rotate the adapter into position. This adapter is made from phosphor bronze, as you can see it's a very different colour to the brass fittings. But on a 504 boiler, the bushes look to be made from brass. Time now to fit the water pump. I place it on the baseboard in its final position where it's going to be, and then using my scriber I make some very very small marks on the baseboard so I know where to fit it when the pump isn't attached. I use some larger wood screws for this job because the baseboard is much softer than the hardwood baseboard that this pump was originally mounted on. And because the screws were larger, I had to countersink the top a little bit deeper. In this clip, I'm screwing the block into position on the baseboard. The next part of the sequence is to mount the pump on the block using some very small 6BA nuts. I decided to tighten the union nuts on the pipe just to make sure that everything was in the right position. And I'm pleased to say it was. This next job is very fiddly. I started the nuts off using a small pair of surgical forceps and then used a spanner to tighten them. The last part of the job is to fit the larger of the two check valves. This thread is 3 8 by 32 threads per inch, and the thread on the inlet to the valve is also 3 8 by 32 threads per inch to take a union nut and a union cone for quarter inch pipe, or in my case, 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe using some special adapters that Chris English at CME Engineering makes me from time to time. They are very useful. This is almost the finished job. I've had to change the plan slightly. Originally I was going to make a much wider baseboard, but then I thought from a space-saving point of view I'd make a narrower one. 
To use the turret though on the narrower baseboard I need to move its position. First of all the tap on top of the boiler, I changed it to face in the opposite direction using shim washers. Then I dismantled the turret and changed the fitting, and this required full disassembly of the turret, which I'm not going to show, and I also unsilver soldered the fitting and re-silver soldered a union nut in its place, and this allows me to use a double union which moves the turret further away from the inlet to the water pump. With the steam turret piped to the boiler and set in the correct position, I made a very faint mark around the base using my scriber. Then I drilled a hole in the baseboard which will correspond with the threaded hole in the turret's mounting column. And as before, once I've counterbored the baseboard from underneath, I can fit this 2BA countersunk bolt to attach the turret to the baseboard. Here is the turret firmly mounted to the baseboard, and you see the principle now. I had to extend the pipe. I could have made a new pipe, but I preferred to do it the hard way. As my videos are designed for beginners tutorials, I like to show many options on doing the same job. There are no options for doing the next part of the job, lagging the pipe with some string. The purpose of doing this is not to make the pipe more thermally efficient, it's to stop me from burning my fingers on the very hot live steam pipe. I had one minor problem because I didn't have any cyanoacrylate adhesive or super glue, so I used Loctite 603 to hold the ends of the string in place. To conclude this series, here are some random shots of my 504 boiler bought via eBay, which I'm going to use in the workshop for generally testing steam engines. This will make it very quick and easy to have a quick steam up on the workbench in the workshop, and because of the different sized inlet and outlet fittings, it will make it much easier to connect different sized steam engines to the boiler. For the times when I do not have anything connected to the inlet check valve, I made a fitting to screw onto the check valve to stop it dripping as steam was being raised. Usually they don't drip a lot as the boiler reaches working pressure, but this blank union nut will stop it from doing that anyway. And that's it, the end of the series. And in these strange days of madness and sadness, all I have to say is stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.